One of the biggest new features in Betaflight 4.5 is GPS Rescue. There was a lot of time spent on it to improve the behavior of GPS Rescue from Betaflight 4.4. So let's take a look at how Betaflight 4.4 used to perform for GPS Rescue, how it performs now in Betaflight 4.5, and also compare that against what you can expect to see with INAV. All right, Engines let's on. see how she goes here on Betaflight 4.3. Or 4.4.3. Turtle mode. Logging on. Return to launch. Acro mode. Return to launch. Where are you going? Acro mode. She's not returning to launch. Return to launch. Oh, it might be. Climbing. Woo. Oh boy. Oi, oi, oi. Oi, oi, oi. Oh God. Oh God. Oh, I didn't even want to take the goggles off because I was worried it was going to come down and whack me. Um, there is the... Jesus. There's the rock where we took off from. Here's where it, I would say, crashed. So, yeah. It, uh, it came back, but uh, it was not subtle. All right, let's see how we do with Beta Flight 4.5. Got distance to home looking good. As always, let's uh, keep it fairly low to the ground. Return to launch. And do return to launch. There we go. What I don't love is that it. Well, it's a little better. Got a little wind. Got a little wind blowing it. Oh, she's fighting it. Come on, stay away from those trees. All right, doing a little bit better on the wobbling. That's good. It's not smooth like uh, I have though. That's why it is called GPS return or rescue and not return to home. Let's see how it does now it uh does a lot better in 4.43 there you go not too bad let's uh see how we did for location out here i didn't get my camera up on this one because it was less death defying but here's where we took off you can see the rock right there and then the drone is over here so not too bad not too uh not too crazy off course like 4.4.3 obviously not as good as inav uh as well um but without a magnetometer too you got to keep that in mind so the one thing that i don't love about gps rescue is that it seems like it enters into just angle mode and when it's climbing to altitude so it can drift off quite a bit so if you're near any obstacles, you, you, you could lose it at that point. I wish it would, well, it doesn't have position hold. So, that, you know, that, that's probably in later releases coming, but that that's the one big downside of GPS rescue. And it's not GPS return to home. It's GPS rescue, as in it's better than it just fail safing and crashing. All right, so let's check out this return to home feature for INAV. Return to launch. So here we go, return to launch. See how she does. So it is in trackback mode. And the angle I have set must be really slight uh, because of the velocity for which it is tracking back is not very fast or the trackback speed 
So by default, you probably want to increase that because this is going to take a while. Now I set this down on a rock. Let's flip over and see how it looks coming in now that it's coming back. Doing a backwards take on it here. So it's going to come in backwards. Ooh. Taking a while. Is it going to come in here? Nope. Doesn't look like it's coming back. Just kind of hanging there. So it's kind of loitered there. Let's see if it comes down. Oh, now it's coming down. I'm right in the sun, that's probably not a good idea. So it kind of hung in there, kind of hung there and loitered a little bit for me. And it's trying to figure out where it needs to go. There it goes. Where it took off, turn this off. Where it took off was right here at this rock. You can see there, and I had it turned on so it would back up, back into its its uh, position. So it would spin the right orientation. Let's see what it looks like real quick, just if I do position hold. Because I don't necessarily have this really tuned, this position hold or altitude hold for this quad. I, I had to change some settings, but I don't have it fully tuned out. But let's just see what a position hold looks like and an altitude hold looks like. So you can see kind of the difference between when you saw it coming in for a return to home and how, the, how it looked there and then how it looks just in a normal altitude and position hold. It's armed. So taking off here again, I'll just put this into position hold. And it is windy today. So this is the position hold now. You can see how that's kind of looking for position slash altitude hold. And it's breezy for sure. It's not doing too bad in its position hold, but it's uh yeah, it's okay. If it's if when when a breeze comes up against it, it definitely um, moves around. It pops up now. I'm, I'm physically moving closer to it. So not not too bad, right? So you can see how it was kind of wobbling around in the return to home is um, a little different than what you get in a position hold. It's a little more steady here uh, with that. So. But of course, the one thing you have to consider is just how well Betaflight flies. Uh, it is the best flying firmware out there. So really the question is, can we get iNav to fly just as good as Betaflight? Well, that's the question we're gonna answer in an upcoming video. So if you're interested in that, please hit that subscribe button, drop me a comment and a like down below. If you are on iNav and you wanna learn how to tune in your sensor with the sensor fusion it does between the barrow, magnetometer, the GPS unit to really get your best altitude hold and position hold, then check out the Patreon link below. I have a Patreon video on that. Thanks everybody, and I hope this helped you understand the differences between Betaflight and iNav when it comes to GPS rescue slash return to home, bringing your quad back to you and what the options you have there. See you on the next one.